The most dependable source of water for your wetland is through artificial pumping. These systems take water either from an adjacent surface water source such as a stream or pond or a well. Considerations for artificial pumping include output. How long does it take to fill your wetland? Is output sufficient to compensate for seepage into the ground and evaporation? Is your source large enough to keep up with your pump or will it run dry after a period of time? What does it cost to operate? Can you afford to pump for 15 days? What manpower is needed to operate? Electrical pumps require you to throw a switch. Diesel systems require someone to check it two or more times daily. And what is the water quality, especially important for wells? Pumping can add considerable expense to your operation, and many look for ways to harness other sources, especially runoff, and use artificial pumping to guarantee water in the fall. The final consideration in determining the potential for your wetland is its location. What are the landscape elevations within the wetland area? Wetland basins with a gradual change in elevation require less water to flood and may be easier to manage. Wetlands with large differences in elevation may require compromising on drainage and will often have very different vegetative communities establishing at the different elevations. How close is your wetland to a stream or river? This impacts the frequency of flooding and may also determine if there is potential for scour erosion from floodwaters within your wetland system. Is there a riparian forest buffer present? Buffers help to filter debris and sediment deposited by floodwaters. Is the stream bank stable? If not, then steps need to be taken to ensure that future stream bank erosion doesn't impact your wetland development. Finally, activities that occur on adjacent land may also impact your wetland management options. The vegetative cover on land that drains into your wetland may determine the volume of runoff expected or the amount of erosion you may receive. Does neighboring land drain through your wetland and will your plans cause your neighbor's property to be wetter than it is now? Are there roads or easements on your property? Many easement holders object to management that limits their access to the easement, such as flooding. What about your neighbors? What are their interests? Often a little time with neighbors can address concerns before they become real problems. Now you get to dream a little. What do you want from your wetland? In some cases, what you can do with your wetland is determined by others. For example, is your wetland enrolled in the USDA Wetland Reserve Program? If it is, there are restrictions on management that were determined when the original plan was developed. Is it in the USDA Conservation Reserve Program? Again, there are program restrictions, such as no food plots that impact options. There are other programs that may have been used to develop a wetland, like the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Each of these has certain restrictions on what management options may be considered. In addition to programs offered by government agencies or private organizations, wetlands may be regulated by the Clean Water Act and the Swamp Buster provisions of the Farm Bill. Check with your local NRCS office before beginning any dirt moving activities or vegetation manipulation, including clearing of trees. Take an inventory of your resources. Do you have the time, the equipment, the dollars, the water source, or the knowledge to manage the wetland like you want? Will your plans fit the site that you have available? Be realistic in your assessment. Most individuals who tackle active wetland management do so in order to have a place to waterfowl hunt. Many times these individuals attempt to mirror the seasonal wetland management they observe on MDC wetlands and become frustrated when they don't have water in the fall. Wetland management is more than just ducks, and ducks use more than just seasonal wetlands. Wetland management can be as simple as build it and leave it, or as high intensity as the management practiced on many public wetland areas. In general, you are trying to mimic natural wet-dry cycles while tweaking them to meet your specific interests. More detailed guidance is provided in another MDC video and in various publications from the department. Wetlands are dynamic and change not only during the year, but also between years. It is likely that your wetland will require some manipulation to maintain a desired plant community. Be sure that any management activity will address the management concern. For example, mowing to control cattails is not an effective strategy. In all wetland management, it is important to promote diversity. 
Often two or more treatments or a combination of two or more methods are necessary to achieve desired results. The frequency of treatment varies with the site. In some cases, it may not be necessary to disturb the wetland for several years. Other sites may require disturbance every two to three years to achieve the desired plant community. Make a record of what you do and when. Not everything you try will work, and this will give you a record of what has been done so you can better predict the impacts of future efforts. Remember that any wetland infrastructure you build, including levees and water control structures, require periodic maintenance to function as designed. Plan on conducting periodic inspections of levees to watch for damage by burrowing animals especially muskrats and beavers, and work to maintain permanent vegetation to keep levees from eroding. Inspect the emergency spillway and any water control structures frequently to ensure they are functioning adequately. Debris buildup on emergency spillways can negatively impact their function and could lead to levee failure. Also note that water control structures occasionally fail. The pipe leading underneath the levee can sometimes become separated to allow water to pass around it which can cause the levee to fail. As you make management decisions, keep your objectives in mind and remember that there is more than one way to achieve those objectives. Do not be overly afraid of persistent perennial plants. They are an essential part of the wetland system and provide some unique benefits. Determine a level of tolerance for them and manage accordingly. Don't let waterfowl hunting guide all your decisions. Waterfowl have different needs throughout the year and will use a diverse marsh more than just a feeding area. Remember that seed production isn't everything. Do choose a management strategy that fits your time schedule and resources. The best management you can do on a site is the one that you're able to implement. Each wetland is unique and requires an individual management strategy. There is no cookbook to managing a wetland. Don't let that fact intimidate you. Instead, may it encourage you to experiment and appreciate the dynamic nature of wetlands. There are a host of resource professionals available to provide assistance on your specific wetland. Don't hesitate to contact your local Missouri Department of Conservation office. USDA NRCS office or US Fish and Wildlife Service office for assistance. Wetlands are fascinating. You have the rare privilege to work with an ecosystem that is the most productive on earth. Enjoy it. <laughs>